All righty, this is Jerry Butler, and this morning we're here with the wonderful and world-renowned Wendell Stevens. And I'm still here at the uh, Galactic Gathering, and Wendell is going to share with us all of the things that he does. And I know for sure that I've heard you on various um, radio stations such as uh, Coast to Coast AM uh, with uh, Art Bell and also you have over 60 years of experience under your belt with various interesting stories. And now, Wendell, first of all, tell us exactly who you are and what it is, some of the things that you do. <coughs> well, I started way back in 1947 collecting UF information on what they then called anomalous aerial phenomena later became known as UFO and when I left the service I just began collecting in earnest more energy and more time and I've been doing this for 64 years okay so exactly what is it that you do I mean it's quite interesting and give me some stories as well I'd like to have some good old Wendell Stevens stories well I was primarily interested in other intelligent life so I was selecting cases that involved other intelligent beings interacting with earth human beings, and I, over the time I've examined over 115 such cases in great detail, some of them taking years to examine, some months, many months, and uh, I used to make memorandum to myself on, on these cases as I was proceeding with the investigation, file them in my filing cabinet, and when the file got thick enough to be important, I would think if I should do something with this, and I'd write connecting paragraphs and put it all together in a book. That's what this is. It's a book called Contact from E.T.B. Ra. Hold on, let me just slowly pan down to that. You don't have to move. Okay, that's UFO. UFO Contact from E.T.B. Ra. Contact from E.T.B. Ra, okay. Another group of human beings that looked like Egyptians, and they wore ankle length togas. Uh, the, their vehicles were two were, were, were disc shaped craft about uh, 30 feet and 25, 21 to 30 feet in diameter that they used to service their plantations. They discovered that our planet was very similar to their planet. We had vegetation that was similar, close enough to theirs that they, could, they, they decided to try to hybridize plants from their, their planet with our planet looking for higher yield and greater uh, uh, strength, greater durability. Where can some of your books be found? Uh, my books are found on uh, Amazon.com uh, UFO Photo Archive. Okay, now, what would they, if they go to Amazon.com, they would just simply put and your name, go to Wendell? the library, yeah. Uh -huh. UFO and Photo Archive. Okay. And, and you'll find a listing of 30-some books that I've written. Now, you also uh, had given me a story when I interviewed you previously uh, about someone had called you in the beginning. You went over to meet them. Who was this gentleman that you were telling me about in the beginning? Who, where did you go and, and, and tell me some of your stories? You had first hooked up. Who did you first start working with in the beginning? Well, my, my first extensive investigation was this one here, UFO contact from Reticulum. Okay, well, let me slow the pan down to this. This was a born-again Christian. His church did not believe in UFOs. They thought that if there was such things, they were a manifestation of the Antichrist, and they discouraged any of their members being associated with the Antichrist's efforts to return. Uh -huh. And so, uh, but then he, in, in a series of onboard experiences, he found that they were not coming from the Antichrist. They now, who were, had, had on-board experiences? He was taken aboard. Who was he? What, who, who are we talking about? Pardon? Who are we speaking in terms of? We're talking about the beings from Reticulum. They were and little grays. They were about four feet tall. Okay, but who was the gentleman that we're talking about was taken on board? He was uh, William Herman. Okay. From North Charleston, South Carolina. He okay. was a deacon in his church. He passed the collection plate. He taught the Sunday school. And when he, his contacts began, he told the minister what was happening. The minister said, oh, we got to get you out of that. But he discovered that they were not harmful, that they were very benevolent, that they were a lot smarter than we were. They knew a lot more things about our planet and theirs than we do. And so he continued the contact, and they took him on various trips with them and brought him back. Uh, his, ex his experiences were, were extremely unique. They even described their home planet, its position in its solar system, and the, the uh, 
geological makeup of their home planet, which is very similar to ours. It has a liquid molten core. It has a, a basaltic layer at, at the surface, just like ours, with mountains and, and rivers, lakes, streams, and vegetation. And so they were very interested in how we were coping with the problems of our planet as compared to their solution to their problems on their planet. They contacted, they, they began to regard Bill Herman as their representative on Earth. They call him their Anbati, whatever that means. We have no idea. And uh, they continued those contacts, taught him a great deal of information, <coughs> took him to an underwater base that they maintained in Argentina, and uh, they told him that they were doing research in our Earth water because it was different from the water on their planet, and giving them a lot of new information. Uh, they showed him how they could uh, uh, neutralize the vibrations of the roof of the space shuttle hangar in Florida, and, and uh, they showed him the mechanics preparing the space shuttle for a future launch. And the alien being touched him on the shoulder and said, tell your scientists that there are some loose plates, loose ceramic plates on that craft, and they will come off and it will be hard, the, the craft could burn up. So he tried desperately to communi communicate this information to the Space Center at, in Orlando, and they didn't want to hear it, but they finally did the launch mission, and it did lose three plates. It could have caused serious loss uh, had they made a, a different angle of approach by a half a degree, for instance. And so the AETs were right all the way through. And then his uh, space people began to pay attention to what the ETs were telling him. Okay, now, you shared a story with me about a gentleman that was a farmer. Uh, what, did you tell me something about somebody that was a farmer? What? what? Uh, or did you tell me about someone that had uh, an abductee or anything like that? Had, uh, do you have any stories like that of someone that has been abducted and uh, any type of, do you know of any stories of anyone that has any type of, had, had contact with an alien or anything of that nature or may have had an opportunity to see any of their instruments or weapons or guns or anything like that? No, I haven't had any contact with any that were helping with, with any uh, weapons technology. They deplore the nature of Earth people, their belligerence and their constant wars. And our nature is such that we seek to destroy each other. They said that we are an aberrant civilization that will destroy itself if we don't learn something soon. And uh, said that they project that uh, we will extinguish ourselves in the, in the mass destruction of our planet. And we don't want to do that. So we, we've got to take a lesson from that and learn to not to get out of the blizzard. Leave it. Okay. And, you know, uh, I would love to, again, have you on my show. I want to be able to slowly pan around and show all of your products that you have so people can see your CDs and your books and all that sort of thing. Okay. If you don't have any objections, let me just slowly pan around. We put together some 30 extended contact cases, ongoing contact cases. Okay, okay, hold on. Uh, I want to let people be able to see just some of... Uh, the things that you have, the UFO uh, Journal of Facts. Also, um, we have uh, UFO contact from the Pleiades. That's what we're talking about today. Okay, uh, UFO contact from planet uh, Corridon. Uh, let me see, as we move on. Corindor. Okay, uh, all of these. Is there something under that paper that you have right there also, Wendell, under this paper right here? B, are you, any more CD? Can you move that paper right there, please? Yeah. Let's see if we have anything else as well. And um, I want people to see all that you have. Uh, I mean, it's so interesting, all of the different products and everything that you do have here. And this is just so phenomenal. Uh, let me just slowly pan back up to you. Uh, what I'm going to do, because it's only like maybe 10 minutes on each clip, but I'm going to still continue on with you. Uh, again, we have the wonderful, the very talented, 
the very down-to-earth Wendell Stevens right here. This is Jerry Butler, and we shall return. Thank you.